Hey, it's James, and welcome back. Seasons are changing in the Northwest, and it's actually quite a relief to scuba divers. During the summer, the visibility in the water is very poor from a rich algae bloom. This spike in primary productivity, while it's great for the fish and animals that live in the Salish Sea, does not make for excellent diving or filmmaking. But now, as the air and water grow colder, visibility improves dramatically. For this next dive, I called on my friend Paul North, the director of the education-focused nonprofit Meet the Ocean, to make the drive up from Portland, Oregon. My name is Paul North, and I am an expedition diver, much like James. And that means we get to go all over the world. But to be honest, just close to home is a very exciting place to get in the water. We're very fortunate on this occasion to be diving from a boat. It's quite a luxury to just tip back into the water and drop down into a dive site instead of carrying heavy equipment down the beach into the water for a long surface swim only to reach a dive site of minimal depth. We loaded our gear into the carts at the marina and wheeled them down the dock. We navigated the inner harbor around Burton and headed south. Turning west, we passed the Telequa ferry terminal, and not much further, we came to Dalco Point. I wanted to show off a little bit for Paul and take him to one of the more extreme dive sites around Vashon. I love to come up and visit Vashon because there's plenty to explore and James knows it best. So he took us to a wall dive and any wall dive has a bit of a harrowing effect to it. Dalco Point, while it may look like any other beach, just perhaps 100 feet off the high tide line, is an underwater cliff. We geared up with a certain amount of trepidation, perhaps. And after our cameras were ready, we hold our regulators and mask to our face, take a giant step off the boat into the unknown. The easiest way to find a cliff is to just drop into the shallows and swim in the direction you know it to be, deeper, until you see the precipice. When we look over a precipice, be it in the air or in the water, it has a psychological effect on us. And in this way, it brings a moment of terror, but also of wonder, and that blend makes for some really intense diving. Dalgo Point sandstone cliffs are drab and pockmarked. But looking closely, many animals lurk in the nooks and crannies, camouflaging themselves, waiting for prey or predators to pass. Sculpin are one such fish, a cryptic bento predator. They lie in wait and ambush their prey. They also use this tactic to hide from their potential predators. They rely on their patterning, but we rely on pattern recognition, so the divers are not nearly so easily fooled. The fish perhaps assumes that we are and allows us to get very close and take intimate images. Sculpin were once known as scorpion fish for the sharp spines that give shape to their fins. A multitude of sea stars adorn the cliff face, crawling along the sheer wall in search of prey. These comical animals are actually quite a sinister predator, crawling on top of their unwary victims and extruding their stomach out of their bodies to engulf their prey, digesting them semi-externally before pulling in the nutrient juices. Sculpin and sea stars, two very different animals in very different niches living together on an underwater cliff.
one of my favorite fish to encounter is the painted greenling. These are generally quite shy fish, not so much ambush lie in wait predators the with sculpin are, allowing divers to approach closely. These fish generally move away, but I was fortunate enough to find a rather sociable animal. This animal mostly eats crustaceans and worms that it happens upon while cruising the bottom rather than lying in wait. While the stripes are meant to break up the fish's outline and make it harder to see to predators, it's also thought to be a mark of fitness and used for mating selection. The stripe across its eye makes its eye look bigger, making the entire animal look larger. Camouflage is an incredibly important adaptation in the animal kingdom, and especially so in the shallow seas. The grand master of camouflage was lurking along Galco Wall and almost evaded our detection. At the last moment, we realized that nestled amongst the rocks and algae was none other than the octopus. The ability to change the color and texture of their skin at a moment's notice and to squeeze their soft bodies into impossibly strange shapes and small locations makes the octopus a devilishly difficult animal to locate if it doesn't want to be found. Octopus are incredibly intelligent animals, and most divers have a keen fondness for them. Paul and I are no exceptions, but the air in our tanks was running low, and with the surface still 80 feet above us, we had to begin our ascent. We break the surface of the water and see a pink alpenglow on Mount Rainier and our dive boat hovering nearby. We clumsily load back onto the vessel and call it a dive, but Paul and I are mostly quiet, despite the exhilarating experience of diving on a cliff. The chilly temperature of the water and the pressure of being nearly 100 feet below the surface takes a lot out of you, but there's something else to it. Witnessing such an unusual landscape of life and beauty is a very humbling experience. Diving in cold water is not for everyone, but for those who venture and, and make the effort, it is so worth it. The Pacific Northwest is one of my favorite places to dive around the world, and trust me, I've been to a lot of places, but it is this close to home that you just open your eyes and there is life all around you, so I will definitely be back. To learn more about Paul's work in ocean conservation, check out meettheocean.org, follow Meet the Ocean on social media platforms, and don't miss their excellent podcast, Meet the Ocean, anywhere you get your podcasts. Special thanks to Nex Underwater Products for making the regulators we dive. The music for this episode was produced by Dominic Walsko. I'm James Hyde. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great rest of your day.